my name is Sobal Fusome and I come from Burkina Faso, one of the smallest countries in West Africa. Uh, Burkina Faso is a landlocked country nestled at uh, the north of Ghana, Benin, Togo, um, north, uh, east of uh, Ivory Coast and south of Mali and Niger. In the southwestern part of this uh, our country is a tribe called the Dagger tribe and this is where I come from. Um, I, I live part of the time in Burkina Faso and part of the time in the, the U.S. and I, um, I bring the uh, uh, wisdom of my elders to the world as well as I do fundraisers for well digging and uh, for education projects in Burkina Faso. Um, I believe that uh, for many years, uh, because of um, uh, the colonialism and slavery, many tribes in Africa have pulled back and uh, have not really been sharing with the world what they hold. And uh, because of the state of the world, which does not exclude anyone, um, that whatever problem affects the West has a tendency of affecting um, other uh, uh, countries far away, uh, it, uh, we have decided, my elders have decided that it is important to bring their wisdom out in the world to also put their voice out there and to also lend a helping hand in resolving the conflict uh, or whatever crisis that exists in the world. And uh, so that's part of the reason why I uh, have been asked to share their wisdom with the world. I really believe that anything in life is uh, about relationship. Uh, you cannot do anything about relation uh, without relationship. Um, even if you walk on the earth, you have to have a relationship with the earth, uh, with the trees, with the birds, um, with the people you live with, with people you walk uh, walk with. You know your intimate friends. So everything in life is really about relationship, and without relationship, nothing truly can exist in its sacred form. And so. Uh, for me, relationship is everything, and of course, that relationship is supported uh, by the spirit, uh, by the deities around, by the gods and the goddesses, and uh, by our ancestors and our families and communities. And so, relationship for me, it's the lifeblood of um, human uh, life. Uh, and it is um, also th what drives people to want to connect to people. And also that is why, you know, we have conflict. Because when our needs are not being met in relationship, we tend to uh, react against uh, that and so forth. So, yes, relationships are important. And, uh, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not saying that my work is exclusively about relationship. But, you know, at the heart of it is relationship. What is the word in Dagara for relationship? Honestly, I don't know. But I would say there is a word for humanity, which is nisalo. Uh, but, you know, relationship, I'm completely clueless. <laughs> um, uh, because uh, the Dagara language is very simple. And what I have noticed myself with that language is that when something start to miss, uh, to be missing in the tradition, then a word uh, usually is created for it. But when it already exists, uh, then there isn't a specific word. Now, there is a word for uh, friendship, uh, for instance, uh, you know, friendship between women, friendship between men and women, friendship between men and men and so forth and of course there is a word you know to define the relationship between you know uh, a mother and a child or a father and child and so forth but you know as a whole to have a word for relationship i i honestly do not know when we talk about relations we would also like to talk about father and mother because um, when we talk about relationship the education is a very important part. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us something about your own education? Um, my education was uh, in the middle of a uh, village, uh, really. I grew up, I was born and raised in a village, and um, uh, for me, 
um, having the village life was very important for my spirit and I shared this with many people because without that community to hold who I am I would probably end up you know being a, an addict or I would have been in jail or in a mental institution um, but and because I was fortunate enough to have a village where I had many mothers and many fathers, many sisters, many brothers, many children, and many grandfathers, it helped not only ground me, but it also brought me that sanity that I needed. And I have even found that in times when um, the village became too small for my spirit, I needed to go to other village to get my needs met. And so, yes, um, education is important. Um, and uh, in my tradition, um, an education is not given by one person or two people. The education is given by the whole community. Um, and so a child who is educated by a whole community cannot go to one person and blame them for their fault um, or for their failures and so forth. Because, you know, who are you going to blame? You have a whole community to educate you. Um, and we also have the education we receive from our environment, from nature, from the ancestors. And those are, are equally valid, you know, being educated by in the spirit way is something that is really important in my tradition because we really do not separate life from uh, the spiritual, you know, everything is incorporated. And so um, my education, um, I would say, probably started before I was uh, even born because of the consciousness that exists in my tradition, in the ways that they welcome children, in the ways that they supported the parent in bringing the children. You know, in Africa, we have been saying that, you know, it takes a village to raise a child. But I strongly believe that it really takes a village to keep a parent sane because even the most loving and uh, caring parent who if they have to tend to a child 24 7 they'll go crazy and it's natural because you realize that sometimes there are things that you cannot give to this child and yet the child needs it and who do you go to and so um so for me, um, it is very important to have many people educate the child um, and to be able to meet the need of the child. And so having that community, you know, before I was born to teach me that the community is important and that when I was born that there is a whole village ready to welcome me. Um, and that, that welcoming has been a part of my life, uh, whether I am home or whether I'm traveling abroad. Uh, that has sustained me in being able to keep my sanity away from my village and so forth. Um, so edu education, the art of imparting wisdom into someone's life or the art of sharing the uh, deepest part of someone with someone else is something that uh, is needed for the world to learn to know how to live um, in a, a respectful way and um, you know the respect of the self and the respect of each other and so forth. So yes, uh, education is important in many ways. Mm -hmm. Do you see any difference in how are people raised here in the West and how they are raised in your tradition in Burkina Faso? Um, yes, actually, absolutely. It's uh, one of the things that was very shocking for me when I came uh, in the West. Uh, because I uh, was brought up in the village, I just assumed that you can just walk into anybody's house, you know, even if you are not invited. If you need, you know, something, you just walk into their house. And when I came to the West, and I realized, oh, you cannot do that. You have to have an appointment or you have to know the people. Um, in Africa, you see, um, you, you can go into anyone's house and you will be welcome because the stranger the stranger is a sacred being and so for children they have a freedom to go anywhere and to be taken care of by anyone and so when a child is sleeping in a place where they're not supposed to be sleeping and you see the child you don't stand there and you say well where is the child mother 